Hello guys, welcome to The Word by Pablo Neruda. In the previous clause, we have seen how Neruda describes, unleashes his ardent love, passion, uh, his indomitable yearning for words. He shows, he expresses, he gives vent to his passion, his love and all sorts of fondling feelings for word. According to him, the word carries a lot of uh, meanings, interpretations, essence, crux and everything related to life and life's philosophy. The word by Pablo Neruda is in fact a pain, a praise. It's just like a praising song sung in praise and favor, appreciating the quality, uh, the, the in-depth, the profundity, the, uh, what do you say, the importance, the significance and the predominance of words in life. Such is a writer, Pablo Neruda, who has so much of uh, intensity and pathos and ethos related to words. He loves words so much. So in the previous lines of uh, the word, we have come across how he savours, he relishes words, he enjoys words, how he chases words, how he hunts words, how Neruda run and chase and follow words and how he has compared vowels to glittered stones and he has compared words to so many images in life. He has taken a multitude of images in order to personify, that is, he considered words as human beings. He attributes human features and uh, uh, characteristic features to that of words. And he says that words are like vegetables, like fruits, like eatables, they are edibles, they are like snow, they are like, what do you say, dishes. They have crystalline texture, sometimes they are glassy, sometimes they are oily, and he wishes to eat them. And sometimes, because of his uh, intensity of his love for words, in that warmth, in the heat of his love for words, they melt. And he wants to catch them as they fly above, up towards the high sky. And he compares even the words to that of stalactites, and slivers of wooden pieces. And ultimately, we have seen how he says that everything uh, exists in words. He says that words, they are, um, they are hidden beneath the oceans, the depths of oceans or sea, just like a shipwreck, just like treasures are hidden beneath the waters of sea and ocean. He can explore, investigate, and find out these words. They are far lying beneath the oceans, the hidden depths of oceans. And they are just like, what do you say, treasures and gifts given to you by the sea or waves. Ultimately, Neruda says that words do matter in life. And he, he says that they, uh, the importance, the power of words they never can be surpassed because you you can express your emotion you express your feelings you express whatever you are the moment you open your mouth you utter words and the choice of your words the way you use these words and what all words you select in order to express or give vent to your feelings it shows what you are your words reflect what you are and therefore words do matter. He continues by saying that words exist in the word, everything exists in the word. An idea goes through a complete change because one word shifted its place or because another settled down like a spoiled little thing inside a phrase that was not expecting her but obeys her. A creative writer, a creative artist, Neruda is now sitting uh, in his uh, study and he is trying to collect and grab and gather and collect words in order to produce, in order to create or make a, a, a piece of art 
uh, piece of uh, creativity. So he, he is in creative frenzy and you can see him saying or complaining. He's grumpy saying that words. I try to collect them, keep them here, keep them there, place them here. Sometimes I choose some words. I change their position. I keep one word here. I keep the other word there. And sometimes I mutually exchange them. Sometimes I take off one word from here and place it there. And what happens when you change words, when the words change their position, the entire meaning is changed. The entire information changes because one word changes from its place. And what happened ultimately? A uh, big idea is shifted or changed. And uh, you have uh, uh, another little word settled down like a spoiled little uh, thing inside a phrase that was not actually he was not wishing to do so but obesa my words are my own i am the master of my uh, my words so that means the words you use the way you behave the uh, sentences or phrases or clauses you utter and share with other people they are your own the words that you use are your own and once you use them uh, what do you say? You are responsible for whatever words you are using in life, whether you are speaking or writing or listening or whatever. A single word that you have used is yours and you are responsible for that. And the whole idea changes and sometimes these words are like naughty kids. They are running here and there unruly. They are not at all uh, obedient and sometimes they are just like spoiled little thing. Your feelings, your attitude, your temperaments decide which word to use, which word not to use. So it depends upon that. So you have to make a right choice of your words once you talk to others. When you're involved in a conversation, you are supposed to use uh, proper words, modest words and apt words, which is suitable for that particular circumstance or context. They have shadow, transparency, weighty feathers, hair and everything they gathered from so much rolling down the river, from so much wandering from country to country, from being roots so long. So here he compares these words to that of the cause of a river. You know, of course, a river begins from the topmost position or topmost points, from the or do you say the peaks of mountains, a river starts and then it comes down slowly and then fastly and then again slowly. So you have different courses for the river. In the course of this river, as the waters are flowing, sometimes slowly, sometimes staggering and lagging and sometimes they flow swiftly. So in the course of this journey, these uh, Waters, they carry so many things with them and he has listed out them. Just like that, these words are also carried. You travel, you move from one position to another and your words are being carried along with you. You move from family to family, place to place. You move from community to community. You travel from one culture to that of another culture. You cross borders, you cross boundaries. You visit other nations, you visit other countries. Your words go along with you, travel along with you. And they carry all the vernacular, local, national, international flavors along with that. Your words represent where you come from, your nativity, your community, your caste, your family, your upbringing. Everything is reflected through your words. So just like the uh, things which are rolling down here. I will say that uh, just like stones and rock pieces and sediments, they collide with each other, they rub with each other and they become smooth, they become polished. You know what is an abrasion and when these stones and rocks, they are eroded, they lie in water for centuries of years and then they collide each other, they rub and they become smooth and polished. 
Likewise, these words, they are carrying so many things, weighty feathers, they are transparent, they have shadow, there is hair, there are tidbits, there is mud, silt, so many waste things, etc, etc. And they are wandering from country to country, just like we move from. We travel and we journey and our words, our culture, everything travel along with us. Likewise, words and what are words, of course, from being a root so long, they are very ancient and very new. They live in the buyer. So here you can see how he has compared words floating or moving or traveling along with the individuals, in, along with the community speakers who travel and exchange. They interact, communicate, and they indulge in conversations. And your words, they carry lots of uh, uh, connotations, a lot of interpretations, a lot of ideas and so much of feelings and sentiments and outlooks and opinions and suggestions, your attitudes, your temperaments, everything is revealed through that. So just like that, you uh, from being, he, he talks about roots, that is your history. Your words, they reflect, they are embodiment of your history, where you come from, where you hail from, etc., etc. And then, he talks about words. Sometimes we rely on old words, outdated words. Some words are obsolete. You say that, oh, it's not used in anymore. Such words are not anymore in use. They belong to the old. They are the archaic words, etc. Uh, and some words are very new. Now, these days, I know, I uh, see... Uh, you will be knowing a lot of uh, new words. For example, uh, in this particular uh, COVID pandemic uh, scenario, so many words have entered into vocabulary. So many words have uh, got onto your tongue and you, you, you're you using different new words, new coinages, new phrases and new clauses, etc. So Likewise, words can be new, words can be old, they can refer to history, they can refer to your culture, they show, they reflect what you are. And they live in the buyer. What is a buyer? A buyer is a coffin, a marble frame or a marble structure to support a corpse, a dead body or a coffin prior to burial. Here, I'm showing you the picture of a buyer. You can have a good look at what you mean by a buyer. It's a marble frame. So... They live in the buyer, these birds, and they are hidden away and in the budding flower. So he's talking about that. These words, sometimes some words, and so many things associated with those birds are buried. They are taken in a buyer and they are hidden away from us. And sometimes they come back to us just like a budding flower, just like a blossoming flower. What a great language. So what does he mean by uh, saying words and words all the time? Why does he say, why does he uh, talk about words always? He is referring to the language, of course. That's what you need to focus on. He is actually talking about language. It's, that is, it's a fine language we inherited from the fierce conquistadors. Yes. Here comes another reference. That is... For a long time, Chile was a Spanish colony. So this might be the reason why Neruda says that Chile has been occupied by Spain for a long time. And maybe Chilean language has become invigorated and interfered by the Spanish language. So Neruda, though he, belong, he is a native of Chile, and of course Chile has been a Spanish colony still, Neruda has always good words, praise and love for the Spanish language, for the colonizer's language. And he says that it's a beautiful language that we have here. Okay, so many words have been tarnished, so many words have been hidden, and some of them came up. They are old, they are new, and they are, what do you say, taken and carried over from person to person, from community to community, from society to society, and even from nation to nation, from one particular country to that of another country. So this is a very beautiful, this is an appealing language that we have got here. From who? 
from conquistadors and who are conquistadors they are they are conquerors they are invaders here he refers to the spanish men who has pre uh, who has occupied or who stayed in chile for a long time uh, making it a spanish colony and the spanish language is so beautiful and that's what we got inherited from our conquerors they strode over the giants Cordillerasi over the rugged Americas. So here again, he is exactly. There is no doubt. Undoubtedly, he speaks about the colonizers, the Spanish men, who who was walking majestically with authority and power. They were reflecting. They were showing their their what do you say? Their imperialistic uh, majesty. That is, Cordillerasi is actually a. series of mountains a chain of mountains there and the uh, spanish word for that cordilleras or cordillerasi so it refers to a chain of mountains so invaders imperialists conquerors they have come here and they are walking to and fro over the mountainous regions they are trying to occupy us they are invading us they strode over the giant mountains through over to the rugged americas the rough the rough americas and they are hunting now here he has given a series of foodstuffs and items and so many things so each representing the wealth and treasures of chile the prosperity and the natural wealth and the richness uh, underlying chile and they came here for hunting and they came for what they came to grab or take off all these treasures and he has used a lot of uh, images like potatoes sausages beans black tobacco gold corn fried eggs etc with a voracious with a very much greedy appetite to engulf to swallow all the wealth and treasures of chile so this reminds us of how the british the portuguese how they came and they landed in india just for trade purposes and that was actually a disguise and later on they captured india and made it a british colony so the uh, reference of neruda when he talks about how chile was a spanish colony you can connect it you can talk about it, you can mention it and it reminds you very painfully but then we have got a lot of uh, positive sides to that how our country advanced and progressed of course you cannot forget all the atrocities and sufferings that was this shown towards indians and the sufferings and the persecution that we have suffered we can't forget you can't just all those things won't vanish away like that but then you can you you can mention this when you're writing when you're attempting an essay on the word by neruda of course you can talk about the greedy appetites the profitable motives and the imperialistic uh, uh, aims and purposes that spain had for chile so he has come for all these things they swallowed up everything yeah you should imagine how when a colonizer colonize a colony a country a place or a space and make it its own colony uh, the colonizer the imperialist force robs off the land rapes the land and what do you say exploit everything to the core and only what is left so a, a, a kind of what do you say the leftovers the remnants the remains are there the essence of a country the the credo the life of a, a nation is taken off and it's swallowed up it's exploited to the core for example religion pyramids tribes and idolatries what are idolatries they are actually idols for worshiping so a colonizer invigorates and interferes or gets into every aspect and every realm and every walk of the colonized life and just like they brought along their huge sacks where they went they raised the land they robbed the land they looted the land so they had huge sacks with them okay they had huge sacks with them they had huge covers uh, they had huge boxes and chests with them and they loot everything they rob everything 
They take every single treasure and riches of the country that they colonize and they take them in their huge sacks and by words. But something when they carried off everything from our country, every, every treasure, every richness, every element of prosperity has been dropped off and we have uh, left useless and fruitless, nothing more uh, lifeless. It's just like they, the colonizer rapes the land and what left or what fell out of these huge sacks pebbles pebbles came out of these sacks okay and what are those pebbles just listen to that words words fell like pebbles out of the boots of the barbarians it's all these are imagery and that's the reason why this piece or this extract of the word taken from Neruda's memoirs is considered to be a prose piece written in the form of a poetry. There is so much of musical quality, there is a rhythm, there is emotion, there is, a, what do you say, uh, powerful emotions and sentiments are embedded in this piece. As he said, words, they fell out just like pebble stones from this huge sack when they were looting and taking away every wealth and prosperity of this nation. Words fell out through the boots of these barbarians. Barbarians are these savages, these conquerors, these colonizers who does not have any culture, any ethics or any humanity or what do you say, any, any sort of humanitarian ethos are absent in them. And out of their beards, their helmets, their horse shoes. So he is describing the physiognomy, the physiological nature of these conquerors. They were wearing helmets and they had horse shoes. They had beards. So from them, from here and there, randomly words fell out. They couldn't carry every richness from this country. Luminous words that were left glittering here. Uh, what is that? It is our language. So when they took these treasures and wealths to their country, words or language, they fell out. They couldn't take it. By that time, we Chileans have already imbibed. We have uh, the, the Spanish language, its richness, its flavor. Everything had already been instigated or instilled in us long back. And they couldn't take that along with them. They were like glittering. The luminous words, they were like glittering pebble stones. And they are language. So possessing a language is symbolic, a symbolic of possessing a treasure. We came up losers. We came up winners. So how could you distinguish or how could you define that we are losers or we are winners? Because... Material or on material plane or in material terms, of course, a lot of treasures have been uh, robbed by these Spanish conquerors. Uh, but then you can't call us completely losers because something they have left here, they couldn't take it with them. And that is, of course, language. We have learned Spanish language. So that means we are not, uh, we are not, uh, uh, losers, we are also winners. We have got something. We have got a gift. We have won something. They carried off the gold and left us the gold. Please mark this line. I'm highlighting this line. This is the credo of this writing piece, the word. They carried off the gold and left us the gold. So, when a normal person, when a normal uh, uh, country or nation look at it, they might feel that we have been financially broken, we have been culturally tarnished, uh, we have uh, uh, politically, we are destroyed. And by all means, in every walks of our life, we have been destroyed, looted, and what do you say? We, we are exploited and we, have op we are oppressed and uh, everything has been uh, looted, the whole land. Chile has been raised away, uh, raped by the Spanish conquerors. But then still, we believe, or I personally believe that, they left us the real gold. It is not these treasures, it is not these gold, it is not these wealth 
that a country is really rich of. It is actually the language. Okay, they carried off everything and they left us everything. What did they leave us? They left us the words. Please mark these three or four lines and you have to learn it. You can, of course, quote in your essay if you're attempting a critical analysis of the word or what is indeed the essence of a thematic concern or uh, how does it look like a poem, though, even though it is written in prose language? You can, of course, quote these lines in your essays. That is, they carried off the gold, the real, the gold which you look at it as having a lot of a, a metal, a metal which has got lots of a price value, so much of price value. So that things they have taken, of course, I agree to that, but then they are left as the real gold. They couldn't carry it off. They had to forcefully, they have to leave it here. They were not conscious of uh, leaving it. Unconsciously, they left us the real gift, the genuine, the original gift, and that is the words. So they are the words. Language is the ultimate treasure as uh, according to Neruda or uh, Neruda's attitude towards words is that if you know a particular language, learning a particular language, learning uh, uh, is just like learning another culture and extending your domains of your knowledge. You are actually extending or you are enriching yourself. Vocabulary and words, of course, makes you always rich. You will never feel that you are a loser. Listening to a good talk, listening to a good speech, or reading, everything enhances your vocabulary. And Neruda, uh, consciously or unconsciously, he's saying that the gold, the gold is actually the words. The words, they are worth than gold. He doesn't specify any particular language. Here, taking the example, taking cues from his own uh, country being a victim of imperialism and colonization, he is trying to attach or he is trying to attribute a positive side to this imperialistic forces or the process of a colonizer coming, invading a place or a space, a land, and making it its own colony, invigorating or proliferating the colonizer's power into every realm, every uh, depths of this particular land and robbing and looting it like anything. But then these colonizers never know one thing that they, when they leave, taking all the possessions or taking all the treasures and wealth from a particular country that has been their colony, they never come to know that they are leaving real gold there. And that is nothing but language. That is, that is nothing but words words they form language so possession of a language is like possession of a vast treasure and riches so there goes neruda and his word and of course we shall have one more short video lesson on the word where i would like to talk to you about the background the uh, details uh, uh, the details related to neruda and the background and the images used in this uh, writing, in this discourse, and how he has involved or how he has brought about a kind of a hallucinative writing. And we need to talk about some touches of surrealism, which is in fact another uh, literary movement or art movement called surrealism, that has elements of both uh, imagination, fancy at the same time, reality. So we have to discuss, uh, it is imperative that we discuss certain background details, the techniques and strategies employed by the writer in making, creating such a beautiful piece of discourse and what are the images and visual representations of uh, this particular word. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching. See you in the next class.